Hello, and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Kisma, and today we have a special guest. Well, sort of, but we're bringing in the mystic next door. So actually, Nick will not be on this episode. In his place is the mystic next door. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this in every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hello there, Mystic. Hello there, Kisma. (laughs) Oh, you're using a slightly different voice, are you? (laughs) I don't know how long that'll last. How come you're not wearing your cape? (laughs) Uh, I don't have a cape. Well, I think you need a cape. Yeah, I, I think anyone who's like using an Instagram handle, the mystic next door, which by the way, that's where you can follow Nick, AKA the mystic next door on Instagram. You need a cape. Uh, cape or robes. I feel like robes are pretty cool. Yeah. That bit robes are more about like, I got you, you know, walk around the house wearing your ninja Jedi robe, but the cape means you take the robe outside. Okay. I think it's Fair just enough. a new, it's a new thing to look Definitely at. Definitely taking that on. I kind of want a cape. I don't know. I think we I can think you deserve a cape. A cape. Yeah, yeah. Capes are cool. Yeah. But back to the topic today, we're really wanted to explore. This is something I know, Nick, you've been working with men in your business as a healer coach. And, you know, the topic is real men, no healing, like K N O W. They know healing. And I, this is an interesting topic. So I want to open up. I want to start it because it's really me asking you questions to share with our listeners. What is healing really? Yeah. Well, before we address that, I want to talk about the real men part because it's sort of a play, right? I want everybody to know who's listening to this, like right up front, like I'm not the real man kind of guy, you know? Um, I'm just not. Like I always, like I, they, like real men do this and real men do that. And like, that's that's actually where a lot of these like really limiting kind of ideas about what it is to be a man come from, right? Mm-hmm. Real men don't cry. Men don't show their emotions. Men mm-hmm. do this. Men don't do that, you know? And, and it's it, limiting. It's it gets very limiting. Stifling, right? And that's just, and that's for me, like, that's just mm-hmm. not my preference, mm-hmm. right? I feel like men are human beings, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's, there's such a wide variety of men and, and the way that we express that in the world. Um, you know, the real men thing, like the real men know healing, like what that is really about is like healing plays an integral role in everybody's life. Mm-hmm. Men tend to relate to that a little bit differently than women do. And it's not something that I've seen that's talked about a ton. Mm-hmm. So when, when it's like real men, no healing, it's, it's really, you know, it's a little bit of a play on words mm-hmm. to kind of br- come into the conversation. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, there is an aspect of that. And, and the aspect of it, I'll give it right up front is, you know, real men. What I mean by that is like any man who calls himself a real man. And this is something I really do believe is on his path of mastery. That's great. I love that. Just as a real woman is on her path to mastery. Absolutely. Not, not in somebody else's way or, Mm -hmm. or the way that they think there's, but really in his way, like Mm -hmm. a real man is on his path to mastery and healing is absolutely an integral part of that path of mastery, like Mm -hmm. in so many ways. That's so, great. So back to your question, like why healing or what mm-hmm. is this all about? You know, I think there's, I think there's a lot of different reasons for healing. Like the obvious reasons are definitely like I'm in pain, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I'm in physical pain or, or emotional pain or, or mental emotional, trauma, or yeah. cer- certainly physical pain, or you're having illness or something mm-hmm. like that. Like your body needs to heal your mind and your emotions. I, and I want to just insert here. I think it is important that healing emotional pain and mental pain is so important because it's the pain that we tend to stuff down or suppress or override or kind of, I got to get through my day, even though I'm really hurting about something. And then that hurt gets pushed down and there's just ways to work through that and heal that. That's right. Yeah. It's that that thing. It's like so many things that just aren't seen in our world with the naked eye. It's Mm -hmm. just really, really easy to ignore, but those unseen scars are actually incredibly powerful in the ways that it informs and guides our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. 
um, somebody with trauma relates to the world in a very, very different way. And, and that, and then as a result of that, they make different choices, which may or may not help them on their journey, right? right? It can be very limiting. It can also really push a person to do different things, but healing it regardless and being free from that, that, that is the path of mastery, yeah. freedom, right? So, yeah, those are some of the obvious ways. The not so obvious ways are are those hidden limiting beliefs, those hidden, those hidden patterns that maybe we grew up with. You know, it's something that we've talked about a lot on the podcast for sure, or or Nick and Kisma have talked about mm-hmm. a lot on the podcast, is uh, the ideas and beliefs that we have around money. Right. right. The paradigms, uh, beliefs, limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. But you can easily extend that into spirituality. Mm-hmm. Like what are the things that you believe about God or what a human being is or or what you think relationships are supposed to be or what, what you think is possible for you to have in your life. Right. Like those are all more subtle indicators that some sort of healing is necessary. Like if you're having a repeating pattern, like we just finished a series on the big leap, which is dealing so much with self-sabotage. Okay, well, when you're seeing patterns like that in your life, that's an indicator that something in you needs to be healed. Right. Right. Really healed and resolved. Like resolved is the best word to think, to really to think about. Because the the true healing is a resolution. That's right. It's a completion of that limiting belief. It's a completion of that self criticism or hatred or doubt or all of that, that is not in line with being a divine human being. So I think at this stage, when we talk about that healing, it's like, let's get back to our alignment with being a divine, perfect being. And I know you talk about that a lot where we are, we start with perfect, Yeah, you know, and somewhere along the way we've convinced ourselves that we're not perfect. Yeah. But the, either the world has told us that and we bought into it, mm-hmm. you know, or we've decided that for ourselves in some way, um, one way or the other, it's this constant striving to, you know, to be perfect, to do, be better, to improve ourselves or something. And, and there's very, very little space to just let ourselves be human. Yeah. And um, healing is something that allows for that. Yeah, and it, it really allows- does. It's like it cleanses away and removes the webs that are not true. Yeah. The congestion that isn't true, the lenses that aren't true. But over time, we humans do a great job of accessing them and they get stickier. And before we know it, we're seeing through a a filter that distorts our reality. That's right. And how we see ourselves. Yeah. It's an interesting filter. We'll see out through it and we'll see ourselves through that filter. Yeah. And typically though, not all men for sure. Like there's no all thing, right? Everybody's an individual, but typically men are not encouraged to talk about those sorts of things, Mm -hmm. right? It's too woo. It's kind of like, uh, you know, like you just, you wouldn't talk like guys will razz each other about it and things like that, you know? It's a different kind of a thing, I think, with men. You know, Mm -hmm. I've never been a woman in this lifetime, so I don't, you know, I don't really know, (laughs) you know, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, no, you know, Mm -hmm. I just know from what I've seen. Um, But in my experience, you know, um, a brotherhood, a true friend is something, you know, sure, the guys, they'll give each other a hard time. They might tease Mm -hmm. each other about things like this. Um, At the time when I grew up, you know, like we would just, we would say things that are just really not, you know, not appropriate like these days, you know, it's Mm -hmm. just, it's a different culture that we live in. Well, we'd say those things to each other, like frequently, you know, just to give each other a hard time. But when the chips are down and you've got a brother by your side, like that person will be there for you. Like, like men will dig in in a way that is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is something to be said for that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the challenge a lot of times is what it takes to get to that. Yeah. Right. (laughs) See and get to and experience it. Yeah. I mean, I've certainly had, you know, some of my friends that they just, boy, it really took a lot. And I was that way myself, you know, Mm -hmm. like it would really take a lot to be, to just really throw your hands in the ears and say, Hey man, like, I really need some help here. Yeah, to be vulnerable enough to ask and to or know, to receive. Yeah, both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think you make a really good point. Both of those, mm-hmm. you know, to to ask first of all, just say, "Hey, man, like I'm struggling here. Like I'm mm-hmm. really having a tough time." I think we have this idea that, that we're supposed to be able to, um, you know, you know, don't be emotional about it. You know, don't don't get emotional about it. Which I think there's value to that teaching, but at the same time, 
you're, you're having emotions, man. Like you have to deal with your emotions. You yeah. Know? I think it's back to the Vedanta govern your emotions. Like don't suppress your emotions. Don't lie about how you feel, but it's governing them and directing them. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. an ownership that mm-hmm. says, man, like I am really struggling here. Yeah. You know, whether I'm feeling frustrated or sad or angry or disappointed or whatever that is, or going through grief or loss or, or depression, right. like whatever those things are, there's a part of you that just has to say like, Hey man, like I'm going through this, yeah. you know, I'm, really struggling here. And then like you said, that other part of actually receiving the help. Right. There's an idea. I see it with men and women, but, but definitely predominantly with men, with men it is like, I got to do it all myself. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you don't do it all yourself, that it somehow doesn't count. Right. And, uh, that's, and that just creates a lot of depletion. Oh my God, man. It's so yeah. heavy. Yeah. It's really, really heavy. Well, let me ask you this. You are president of Energy Mastery. You um, lead certifications and trainings like Energy Mastery Foundations. Um, I see some of the clients you work with, major influencers and business owners. Um, What's it like being a man in the healing arts community? And, and the question too, I know you just had a meeting with, sometimes you work at Four Moon Spas in Encinitas. He was like, oh, we had a meeting with all the healers. Were you the only man? Or I was. Yeah. Interesting. I, right? I noticed it too. Yeah. I, was, I didn't say anything, but I noticed it. And I'm like, where are all the guys? Man? <laughs> it's a different, I, I definitely bring a really different energy to it, uh-huh. you know? And I feel like I've worked with a lot of women and men, so mm-hmm. I'm pretty adept with both. You know, I mm-hmm. don't, I don't personally have a preference, you know, mm-hmm. I'm looking for human beings who just, you know, really want to make some changes in their life and, mm-hmm. and are open to doing that in a really unique way and an awesome way. But what I've noticed is that, you know, there are certainly, it does, it brings out different things with people. Yeah. Um, and uh, for those of you, you know, listening who've worked with me, it's, it, I like, I've heard, I've heard all kinds of funny, fe- you know, funny feedback. It's funny to me. Cause they're like, wow. Like, you know, when you drop in on our calls, like you can be really direct, you know, you can, you know, you, you really drop in and, and truth be told, like, I'm very, very present, you know, mm-hmm. and not, I, not in like a harsh way, but in a, in a, mm-hmm. just really in a loving way, you know, but it's different than a woman who, who's in that space, I yeah. think. And at the same time, it's like, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun and laugh, yeah. you know? So I do have that kind of childlike part of me. It's a big part of me. Yes, you do. And it's <laughs> fun. Like it's, I, I like to have fun, but what, when we're working with people and really dealing with those yeah. things, you know, I think there's something to be said for just having a really strong space being held for you. That is absolutely unshakable. Right. Like people have told me some wild, wild things about their lives and what they've been through. Yeah. And that's my commitment is nothing that anybody says is going to shake me. We're, you're, we're dealing with you as a human being right? And, and all the human stuff that you bring with it. And we're going to solve it. Yeah. What are some of the beautiful after effects of going through work with you? What, what have you noticed with people in terms of either their relationships or their health or their money? Um, health wise, uh, I have worked with some pretty unique cases across the board, you know, people just, they feel so much better, Mm -hmm. right? Both physically, mentally, emotionally. Yeah. Well, just physically speaking, if it's like chronic pain, Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, one person was recovering from Lyme disease, Mm -hmm. you know, another person had a, uh, was recovering from surgery, you know, they went ahead with a surgery and, you know, really Mm -hmm. went through that. Other people have, uh, been dealing with a lot of, uh, mental and emotional things, but that manifests in the form of severe fatigue and headaches and just really all those kinds of things. And on the other side of that, you know, if you think about what it's like to live in that on the other side of that is a very, very different experience from Mm -hmm. life. So, you know, you take the pain out of your life. Yeah. And what's possible for you now? Yeah. Sometimes it feels very strange to let that go. It really does. Mm -hmm. It really does. Uh, Or you take all of the spinning out of your head Mm -hmm. and, and what will you do with all of that energy and space that now you have? Yeah. All the time, all the time and mental energy spending, assuming and making stories and huge thought flows that are debilitating. Yeah. So you can imagine what's possible with yeah. that. And one of my, one of the clients in particular that comes to mind um, has a business of her own and just a lot of anxiety that was really manifesting as a lot of fatigue. And mm-hmm. and I tell you, by the time we were done with that, like she had been about halfway through the year and was like, eh, maybe I'll kind of break even with what I did last year. 
And I was like, well, wait a second. Like, what's your miracle here? Mm -hmm. You know, let's stick with that. Let's Mm -hmm. go for that. And uh, we opened up the space for that, you know, both energetically as well as like mentally, you know, Mm -hmm. to get some of the the stuff out of the way. This is, oh, it's too late. It's not possible or whatever. And I'll be dang, man, she hit that goal. And that was, you know, that was an increase of a couple million dollars in her business. So I, I love hearing that because the prosperity is everywhere, right? And the health and the wealth and the relationships and our own relationship with self. People that are running big businesses need healing too. Absolutely. You know, because there's a lot at stake and there's a lot going on in the head. Well, think about it in that context, especially in a business. Okay. You're responsible for a team Mm -hmm. and they're human beings, man. They're not machines. Right. They've got all their stuff and there are, you know, connections that are being formed there and though they're human beings. So they're probably going to bring up your stuff while you're at it. Right. And if you're, getting pulled constantly into that, you're part of the problem, Mm -hmm. right? If you're tearing through staff or or if you're keeping people on that ought not be there and just continuing with the drama uh, or ignoring it and hoping like all of, none of those are solutions that are going to get you to the goal. And and none of those are solutions that are going to help everybody be happier and more successful. Right, right. So healing what's going on inside of you is the only thing that allows you to lead in true integrity. Right right? To, to hit the goals for one, but also to have an experience doing it that doesn't destroy your life. You know, yeah. it's fun. It can be fun and joyful. Yeah. And that's what I've heard across the board with people is like, they that. just have so much more fun and joy in their life. Oh, and that should be the case for life, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like we were talking about in the last episode, um, you know, we are time, owning time and owning our life. And it's a lot easier to own time and be the source of time when we're feeling aligned and clean and healed. Yeah. So I know that I will hear often, you know, from women who want a male partner, oftentimes it's like, oh, I want to find a man who's on the journey, who's on a path, who's doing the work. And, and I hear that from men as well. I want a woman who's, you know, doing the work or on the path. But what does that mean to you? You know, what, it, what it, through your eyes mystic next door, what does it mean for a man to be on the path? Well, that'll look different. Look different than a woman being on the path? Well, oftentimes I think Mm -hmm. it will, um, but it it looks different for each man. The defining characteristic is somebody who's willing to take a look at themselves Mm -hmm. and change something within themselves when there's a problem. Like somebody who's willing to say, yeah, I'll work on that. You know, not just to make you happy necessarily, although that's nice, right? It's nice to have harmony in a relationship, but really to do it just because it's showing up for a reason and there's something there to be healed, to be looked at, to be Mm -hmm. examined and, and, and changed. And the willingness to do that and the desire to do it. And the desire to do it. Yeah. I think a lot of times that's, that's always my first question because I've certainly heard, you know, a lot of women ask me that they're like, well, you know, I see that like, you know, like you're on your journey, you know, but there's not so many of you out there. And yeah, there's like, not so many of you out there. I don't know that that's true necessarily. Yeah. I think, I think maybe there is, it just shows up in different ways. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's not readily apparent because it's not the way that they go about it. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think with guys, it's often, it is a little, it's not necessarily something that most men are like super out there with. It's not an extroverted path. That's right. There's Mm -hmm. guys like me for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. um, Hey, this is my life. You know, Mm -hmm. this is, this is Mm -hmm. what I do. I'm really passionate about it. I've been passionate about personal development for a really long time, but that's not the same for everybody. Uh, and, uh, you know, other people, they, other men in particular, you know, they'll have a little bit more of a subtle way of, of going about it, but you talk to them and it's like, Hey, you know, like I, you know, I read and I study every morning. Here's what I'm reading. Here's the things that I'm into. Um, and they're like any human being, you know, there's certain places where, you know, they're very willing to look at what <laughs> it is that they're doing in their lives that are creating the circumstances. And there's times when we're really not willing to do that, <laughs> right? That doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's on their journey or not on their journey. Mm-hmm. It just means that you've hit a limitation there right. for them. And um, that's something really that's worth examining. I, I, so many women say, say, 
say that, you know, I want a man who's really on his journey with that. And I don't know, part of that too is I think is a little bit of a careful what you wish for. Yeah. Cause you might get someone who's really on their journey and not showing up the way you thought they might, but in an even better way. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't look like what you think it looks like necessarily. Mm-hmm. And I think when you try to put somebody in a box, it's like the same thing that you do to somebody else, you yeah. know, like, yeah. it's just like, Oh, it's, well, not, it's not really fair. I think it's fair to say for each and every human, it's so important for us to not put our stuff on someone else and be like, if you're, you know, if you're doing the work, it's going to look like this. Cause it's, this is how it looked like on me. You know, right. we're, we're all unique and, um, we're all going to be going through something in our own way. And to be able to respect that and welcome it, I think is, is really divine. That's right. And then the other aspect of that is once you, if you are in a relationship with somebody like that, you really have to check yourself because if you know, like, you know, things and, and you see somebody's like, just maybe not taking responsibility, uh, or they, they, they've got something going on that they're just not willing to see yet. And you're the one who's like pointing that out to them. <laughs> like, did that, like, I do never th- do that. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> like that per you're going to have an argument, right? Somebody's going to dig their heels in. Cause that's usually, you know, that's a pretty vulnerable place. But this is a great, great thing to look at because if there's a relationship and, and there's a challenge and someone sees it, do they ignore it? Or how is it lovingly presented for the highest and best of the relationship and both people? Well, that's a great question. When, <laughs> is that when, a whole nother episode? When, yeah, I think that okay. is a whole other episode. When you have the answer to that, I'd love to hear it. I, I, I have some ideas. We'll do another episode <laughs> on that. I, I I would say this, it's what it isn't is pointing the finger. Yeah, that's definitely not, mm-hmm. that's definitely we not We can look that. at what it is not. It's not sure making about someone one. wrong. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, oh, that's, oh, it's so tempting though. It's so tempting to make somebody else wrong. Um, sometimes not that I ever get into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, um, a lot of times it's like when you're in a relationship like that too, is like, you know, you're in this growth, there's a mirroring thing going on. You know, you're showing these, these different aspects of yourself and seeing yourself in other ways. Mm-hmm. And, and boy, it's just, there's a lot going on there and navigate lightly. Like the catch all for me, the thing that I always come back to is I, don't want to have you be any different unless you want to be any different. Like that's not my job. My Mm. job is to love you exactly as you are, exactly where you are as fully as I am humanly capable of. Like, I think that's like what I come back to that, Mm -hmm. right. That's my, my Mm -hmm. work to do that. And certainly it's, you know, it's not always easy to wait until you're asked Mm -hmm. for, for actual help or advice. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes you just kind of bite your tongue with it and just, okay, you know, they'll, Mm -hmm. they'll see it or they won't. And that's not my job anyway. And the other part is knowing, you know, and and having an in, like you said, an elegant in. in. Yeah. Elegant (laughs) in. That's a good way to put it. It's uh, not, uh, I don't know. That's definitely a whole episode. And then we probably do a 10 part series on that one. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love this. And, And I love how you appreciate. And, you know, there's a lot of men that do like Tony Robbins events and things like that. And, um, what's the thing in the desert, Bernie man. And, and their own definition of healing. That's right. Right. So it, it can come in different dimensions and different textures. I think the most important thing is, you know, I love that there is this conversation out there around healing. And I really love that more men are stepping into it. I love that. It's like mm-hmm. my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. I love to see that. I love to see you guys find their own way. And and I just, I love working with guys. It's, yeah. a, it's always a really interesting mm-hmm. um collaboration. I, I I do think it kind of blows the lid off what's possible. Yeah. Oh, in so many ways, yeah. in so many ways, yeah. you know, as far as like love and relationships and sex and like, you know, money and business mm-hmm. and just the, like that, like a truly loving relationship with yourself. Right. Like that's, it's such a powerful thing. Totally. Well, I know that um, some people might be interested in doing some different kind of work with you. So what do you have going on these days? Well, uh, first and foremost, you know, there's three things we're always talking about with the mystic next door is first is know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the ULT assessment. It's a way to just really get a good snapshot of what's going on with you right now, as well as what you're built Mm -hmm. for, you know, what's Mm -hmm. your real potential? What are your innate gifts and talents? Secondly is heal yourself. 
I teach energy mastery classes regularly, which is basically where you learn how to uh, do that for yourself uh, Mm -hmm. and, and really, really get some great tools. Like you can't find a better tool set, a more comprehensive tool set to heal whatever's going on inside of you. Energetically, there's certainly a component of that. And and I can certainly explain why in a ton Mm -hmm. of detail. We don't have to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But mentally and emotionally as well, to be able to deal with those things, that's heal yourself and then master yourself. Mm. Right, Master yourself is really for somebody who wants to step in fully and and, um, really take the reins. It's a collaboration. You Mm -hmm. know, it's it's not necessarily like a short term kind of thing. It's, it's a person who's really on the path of mastery and, um, wants somebody by their side for that, Yeah, you know, to really keep them true. Absolutely. That, that's Cause why live about. life if you can't master it? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like what's that all about? Yeah. You know? So how do our listeners reach you if they're interested which I'm sure many people will be and one or all above. Yeah. The best way to go is just go to my website, nickhansinger.com. At mm-hmm. the top of it, you're going to see, you know, work with me and it's got a drop down there. Know yourself, mm-hmm. heal yourself, master yourself. Cool. Yeah. Fill it out, send it over. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I think what's a really beautiful vision for all of our listeners is it's like you said, what would be possible? you know, always looking at like what would be possible without carrying that heavy burden that you've been hanging on to, or, you know, the mental chatter that won't let up or even some physical pain, like what would be possible when you can find a way to solve and resolve that? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, all right, Mystic Next Door, any other last words, illuminated thought for our listeners? Well, the illuminated thought for the day is if you're on your path of mastery, then healing is absolutely 100% a part of that path. I love it. Totally agree. Thank you for being here, Mystic. And to all our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Share this episode with someone that you feel might benefit, love, and can't wait to tune in next week. Namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.